Box 13, with the star of Paramount Pictures, Alan Ladd, as Dan Holliday. Box 13, box 13, box 13, box 13. He looked deeply into her eyes, which reflected his mood like twin lakes of azure blue. Azure blue. Why does a woman always have to have azure eyes? Why couldn't they be fire engine red? Huh. As his muscular arms tightened around her fragile... Susie. Oh, Mr. Holliday, I'm not fragile, but I'm sure scared. Somebody's been following me. With those legs? Why not? I, I was petrified, afraid to look back even. His footsteps kept going click, cluck, click, cluck. Real sinister-like. But that's him now. Mr. Click Cluck? Oh, Mr. Holliday, he followed me all the way from box 13. And now, box 13, starring Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. Well, this is a brand new twist. Besides a message from Box 13, Susie has brought a mysterious caller. Somebody who wants in, but definitely. Don't answer it, Mr. Holliday. Now, now, Susie. You didn't see this person, huh? No, I, I just felt him following me like a, uh, like a phantom. Except his heels went click, cluck, click, cluck. Oh. That doesn't sound so dangerous. Let's take a chance. Come in. Silly me. I ought to be ashamed for being such a fraidy cat. Look who it is. Well, Susie, who is it? I don't know. Who are you, mister? My name is George Flitt. I'm a, a detective. And you're Dan Holliday, the writer. It's, it's on the door. A detective, huh? <laughs> Why, isn't any bigger than me. But I have nerves of steel and the heart of a lion. Oh, oh, I see. And what brings you here, Mr. Flitt? Well... Who? Uh, uh, nerves of steel. Heart of a lion. <laughs> that was no fair, girlie. You took me by surprise. Susie. Now, Mr. Flitt. Why don't you open the envelope I put in box 13? Here it is, Mr. Holliday. Oh, thanks. Open it. I'm all goose lumps. Okay. Well, what do you know? Why, there's nothing written on the paper. Hmm. How about that, Flit? See how clever I am? I put that envelope in box 13 as bait. As bait? Yes, I knew it would lead me to the person who put the ad in the Star Times, Adventure Wanted. Will go any place and do anything. Very clever, Mr. Flit. Oh, what made your footsteps go click, cluck, click, cluck? <laughs> oh, that. I lost the metal cleat off of one of my heels. Oh. Well, now that you've discovered me, Mr. Flitt, what? Mr. Holliday, I'd say you're just the man for the job. Job? Something exciting, you hope, huh, Mr. Holliday? I'd handle it myself, only I'm so tiny. Besides, I've done mostly divorce work. <laughs> just the right height for keyholes. But uh, about the job? Well, I'm coming to that. Uh, Mr. Gilbert Bolton sent me $50 just to attend the party tonight. Fifty dollars. I should have been a detective. Oh, you can be. I'll split with you if you'll go to the affair in my place as me. You got the money. What's the catch? Oh, there's really no catch. Uh, only thing Mr. Bolton said was there might be a little um, bloodshed. Well, well, well. This holiday is the wackiest situation yet from good old Box 13. Yes, Holiday, you must be hard up for story ideas. Hard up for brains, too. Otherwise, why are you riding with George Flitt, detective, in his hot rod jalopy? Destination, bloodshed. 
And you've never met this Bolton who's having the party? No, but he phoned and explained that the party is going to be at his nephew's place, uh, Kenneth Bolton. Kenneth, huh? Uh, what about the bloodshed? Well, as I understand it, Kenneth's father, that is, uh, Gilbert Bolton's brother, committed suicide not so long ago. Oh. Gilbert said the boy is suffering from neurasthenia, I, I think he said. Psychoneurotic, huh? Uh, yes. On account of the way his father died, uh, Gilbert's afraid the boy may take his own life tonight. Why tonight, especially? Well, it seems that Kenneth drinks a lot at these parties and gets depressed. And my job is... To see that he doesn't commit suicide tonight. I've looked forward to more pleasant evenings. I, I think that's the place up ahead with all the lights on. Yeah, that's the address you mentioned. Hmm, we must be about 15 miles from town. Uh, 14 and 7 tenths by my speedometer. Well, Flit, I may as well take off. What are you going to do? Oh, I'll sit here in my car and listen to the radio, sort of keep my eye on things from the outside. Good idea. See you later, then. Here we go again, Holiday. Oops, the name's George Flit, detective. Remember? Beyond this door, who knows? But it's a beautiful house, a beautiful night, and a beautiful girl. Good evening. Oh, good evening. I'm looking for Mr. Gilbert Bolton. Won't you come in? And you are? Uh, uh George Flit. You say you're George Flit? That's right. I'm Rita Martin. How do you do? Now, let's go in and find Gilbert Bolton, Mr. Flett. Oh, Holiday, here's a jungle cat. A vampire right of, of Terry and the pirates. That jet black hair, those heavy-lidded eyes. That glistening crimson mouth. And something else. Yes, heavy, clawing, sensuous. A perfume such as you've never known before. That's something to remember this Rita Martin by. Mm-hmm. Oh, there you are. Oh, Gilbert. Yes, Rita. Gilbert Bolton, this is George Flitt. George, how do you do, Mr. Flitt? Mr. Bolton? If you'll excuse me, gentlemen, I'll see you all a bit later. So, you're George Flitt, the detective. Yes, that's right. Your voice seemed, well, different over the phone. Well, you know, detectives, many disguises, many voices. <laughs> Got to keep them confused, you know. Somehow I pictured you differently. Oh? Well, no matter. You know why you're here. Yes, to keep my eye on your nephew, Kenneth Bolton. More than that, to keep him from chilling himself. The way this man looks at you, Holiday. So cool, so calculating with piercing eyes that thud against the back of your skull. He could be one of two men, a man of distinction or a man of extinction. Okay, Mr. Bolton, I'll keep your nephew alive. That's your job. But what makes you think the boy wants to commit suicide? Well, since his father, my brother, took his life, Kenneth has been extremely upset. It's only natural, Mr. Bolton. I know, but I've heard Kenneth threaten suicide, and it's got me worried. Anyone else heard him? Yes. Miss Martin. Uh, anyone else? What do you mean, anyone else? I just wondered if anyone else had heard him make these threats. I really wouldn't know. It's enough that Rita and I know about it. How does Rita figure in this picture? Aren't you being a bit presumptuous, Mr. Flitt? A detective likes to know these things. Miss Martin is an old friend of the family. Oh, there's Kenneth now. I'll bring him over. Just as Gilbert Bolton passed me, there was something familiar about him. What was it? Who was it? Go on, think, Holiday. It may be an important clue. But here they come. The man of extinction and a typical boy from Princeton or Yale or Harvard. George Flitt, my nephew, Kenneth Bolton. Glad to meet you. How do you do? Enjoying yourself, Mr. Flitt? Very much. How about you? Oh, so-so. These parties get to be a boy, huh? Kenneth hasn't been quite himself since the tragedy. Must you always bring that up, Uncle? But you know you've been terribly upset, Kenneth. So I've been upset. Why talk about it? Oh, Mr. Flett. Yes? Will you come with me for a moment? Oh, I sure. It 
so close in here that I thought a breath of air. It suits me. In the garden. The garden it is. Hmm. Nice. A moon, too. Mm -hmm. Lovely, lovely night. Ah, the scent of those flowers. Exquisite, isn't it? Uh-huh. But not to compare with your perfume. You noticed it? Yes, it was so unusual. It's called Whispering Gown. Whispering Gown? Mm, I like the name. Say. Yes? I know where they got that name. Oh? From Cerno de Bergerac. The passage where he describes Roxanne. Across my life, one whispering silken gown. That was lovely. You're quite literary, aren't you, Mr. Flett? Well, yes and no. Just what do you do? Gilbert Bolton didn't tell you. No. No, but let's sit on this bench and you tell me all about yourself. As you come close to her, you get another whiff of... And suddenly you've got it. That's what bothers you about Gilbert Bolton. Her perfume rubbed off on him. If it isn't an old friend of the family, she's young and a close friend of Gilbert Bolton's. She's brought you out here for a reason. Well, aren't you going to sit down? Oh, I sure, but uh, just a minute, I want to buy some cigarettes. I've got plenty of cigarettes. Uh, I'll be right back. Something about this whole setup is as phony as a china egg. And as the crooks in your story say, better case a joint before you go inside. There. There's a window. Just pull the bushes back. Let's take a gander. Well, everything looks on the up and up. Kenneth with a drink on the table beside him, and there's his uncle coming up. Hmm. He set another full drink right beside Kenneth. Hey, what else is he doing? You'd better get in there, Holiday, and fast. <laughs> Mind if I, I join you, gentlemen? Well, not at all, not at all. You appeared quite uh, suddenly. Care for a drink, Mr. Flitt? Here, I haven't touched this one. No, no, let me fix Mr. Flitt a fresh drink. <laughs> I think I'll just have one of these hors d'oeuvres. Hey, watch it, my drink. Oh, I'm... I'm sorry. Flitt, you... you awkward idiot. Oh, excuse me. Yes, Uncle. Accidents will happen. I didn't really feel like another drink. It was your idea, remember? Well, Mr. Flett, were you able to borrow some cigarettes? I was ambushed by hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> Glad you're here, Rita. I have a proposal to make. Yes? What say we all run up to my penthouse for a while? Oh, sounds good. What do you say, Mr. Flett? Fine. I think a change of scenery would be nice. Well, you'll enjoy the view overlooking Green Hill Park from the penthouse, Mr. Flett. Oh, good. What's the address? Uh, I tell you what, Mr. Flett. Rita, Kenneth, and myself will go ahead in my car. Then you can follow us in yours. Well, maybe I'd better go with Mr. Flitt. Keep him company. No, I'd like you with me, Kenneth. There's something I uh, want to discuss with you. Important. Well, per perhaps I should have the address in case I lose you. you that, know, that won't be necessary. Uh, just follow me. Of course, Holiday, you... Could be wrong, but it looks like Gilbert Bolton isn't too anxious to have you find his penthouse. Ah, but you're a suspicious lad, Holiday. You've created so many diabolical characters for so many fiendish plots. Maybe you've, maybe you've become a little touched. The time's a waste on Holiday. Get to a phone. Ah, there it is, end of the hallway. Now, if Mac's on duty in the morgue of the Star Times, we'll ask a few questions. Star Times reference room. Hello, Mac. This is Dan Holliday. Ah, oh, Danny. What can I do you for? Say, so you got anything on the Bolton suicide? Just filed those clips away yesterday. And even if this is a clips joint, I won't charge you a penny. <laughs> clips joint. You get it, Dan? <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 I get it. But what about Bolton? Poisoned himself. Left all his dough to his son, name of Kenneth. Anything else? Well, there was something about Bolton's brother, uh, Gilbert. He sort of taken over and helping the boy. Kid was pretty broke up. Hey, Dan. Hey, did you hang up? No, but someone did. Someone was listening on another extension. Hey, this is the fastest hot rod I've ever driven. We're keeping right up with a Bolton. And he's doing 70. <laughs> Wait until you shift into high gear. Where are we going? To a penthouse, I hope. 
Gilbert Bolton's. Hmm. Uh, what happened at the party? Oh, Rita Martin tried to get me into the garden, and I got suspicious. Trying to keep you away from your job, wasn't she? Yeah, so I rushed back into the house, stopping to case the joint through a window. Case the joint? <laughs> a detective talk. Yeah, then I got into trouble with Bolton. Well, how? By knocking a drink from his nephew's hand. Huh? Uh, what did the uncle do? He got insulting. Then all of a sudden, he suggested going to his penthouse. Watch it, watch it. He, he's slowing down. Yeah, I wonder what his idea is. Oh, he's just slowing down for that train. But he only slowed down for a second. Look at him go. I know what he's doing. He's trying to beat that train to the crossing. He's trying to lose us. Step on the gas. Step on the gas, Mr. Holliday. Okay. Mr. Holliday, are we going to make it? He made it, but I don't know about us. You are listening to Box 13, starring Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. And now, back to Box 13, starring Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. such a close shave, I'll see my barber. Yeah, me too. Gosh, Mr. Holliday, I thought I could handle this hot rod, but the way you whipped her off the road just short of those tracks, I... Mm, not a scratch on her. Lucky us. Oh, that train must be a mile long. Mm, by the time it passes, Bolton can be in Alaska. What's the address of his penthouse? You're asking me. All I know is that overlooks Green Hill Park. Our next stop... <laughs> Well, George, Green Hill Park. <laughs> I bet all these buildings have penthouses. We'll try them all until we hit the right one. I'll go around this side of the park. Okay, and I'll try the buildings around the other side. Bolton's got to be in one. Do you have a Mr. Bolton in your penthouse? No one here by that name. A Bolton in the penthouse? No, but uh, we have a Botsford in the basement. Why, yes, Mr. Gilbert Bolton came in a short time ago. Hello? No, with a lady and gentleman. Want to go up? Oh, please. Did Mr. Bolton say anything about expecting more guests? No, sir. Do me a favor. If a little fellow with a squeaky voice shows up asking for Bolton, tell him I'm here, will you? Dan Holliday. Yes, sir. Oh, here you are. Thank you, sir. Your floor, sir. Uh, that's the penthouse door over there. Right. I've got a sneaking hunch I won't be welcome. Flip, how did you get up here? You, uh, you didn't expect me? Oh, yes, yes, of course, but uh, you've earned your money. You can, well, you can go home now. I'm sorry, Miss Mart, but Mr. Bolton hired me. It's up to him to fire me. But he's not here. He and Kenneth both went out. May I come in and wait? No. Goodbye. Now what? Now what does the intrepid hero of my stories do? Hmm. He looks for another door. Like that one. He tries it. It's open. It leads into a hallway. And there's yet another door service entrance to Bolton's penthouse. And ten to one, it's locked, bolted, and barred. Maybe even nailed shut. You're some gambler, Holiday. Offer ten to one and lose. The door's open. Well, here we go again. Shh. Quiet, Holiday. Ah, oh, there's a door leading to the terrace and voices... I'll get your ear up, Holiday. But don't let them see you. Don't you think it's a little chilly out here, Uncle? Let's go inside. Chilly, Kenneth? I'm really very comfortable. Here's the view I was telling you about, Kenneth. 
Better lean over the rail a bit to see around that turret. Oh, don't push against me, Uncle. That's a ten-story drop. Now, look over there, Kenneth. Uncle Gill! <laughs> Kenneth, let's get away from that rail! Oh, Flint, you don't have to throw me back. Better than having your uncle throw you forward. What's the meaning of this outrage, How did you get in here anyway? I'm going to call the police. Fine, and save me the trouble. Look, Kenneth, I was hired to keep you from committing suicide. Suicide? Who, me? Yeah, but instead I'm keeping you from being murdered. Feel in your coat pocket. Ignore him, Kenneth. He doesn't know what he's talking about. A bottle? It's marked poison. Yeah, I saw your uncle plant it in your pocket through the garden window. He wanted to make it look like you poisoned that drink I knocked from your hand. Stop right there, Holiday. This isn't a cap pistol. You too, Kenneth. Don't move. Well, you must be crazy, Uncle Gill. And you knew I was Dan Holiday all along, huh? Of course. I've seen your picture in the book review pages. And I caught you a telephone conversation at the Star Times. On the extension. You get around. I can't believe this. You, you, my uncle. What's the play now, Bolton? Well, first I walk over to Kenneth and knock him out with his gun. No. Don't move, Holiday. I've still got you covered. Oh? And now that you've knocked out your nephew, what's your next move? Mr. Holliday, before I heave him over the rail to make it look like suicide, I'm going to shoot you. Oh, fine. Then I'll wipe my fingerprints off this gun and press my nephew's hand around the butt. Hmm. His fingerprints on the gun will prove he shot me, huh? But what about a motive? Very simple. You tried to stop him from jumping off the terrace. And you're supposed to invent plots, Mr. Holliday. But they'll trace the gun to you, Bolton. Oh, no. It's Kenneth's gun. I took it from his room. And you wanted a detective on hand to throw off suspicion? Yes, Mr. Holliday. Who'd suspect Gilbert of murder when he'd hired a detective to protect Kenneth? But why? Why do you want to kill your nephew? Let's say I borrowed quite a large sum I can't make good. Oh, embezzlement, huh? And you need Kenneth's inheritance to keep out of jail. Wouldn't he lend you the money? Not the amount we need. We? Obviously. So we're taking it all. Clever, eh, Holiday? You're killing me. You're so right. Get rid of whoever it is, Rita. <laughs> If that isn't help, Holiday, forget about writing the great American novel. No room in a coffin for typing. I tell you, you really can't. Here, I've got to go in and see. I know. I say you can't come in. I tell you, I've got to go in. I know Dan Holiday's in here and nobody's Never mind, Rita. Him. I couldn't stop him. I've got plenty of bullets. Welcome to the party, George. Hello, Mr. Holiday. Uh, a gun. Let me out of here. Stop. Stop or I'll shoot. Ah! Gilbert, watch out. Thanks for the distraction. Flip. Now, Mr. Gilbert Bolton, you know how your nephew feels. Well, I know how it feels to be on the right end of this Smith & Wesson. You knocked him out. What are you going to do? Do? Well, since the party's getting dull, let's invite a few more boys. Say, from headquarters. This is Box 13, starring Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. Come in. Hello, Mr. Holliday. Hello, Susie. Ah, Mr. George Flitt, detective. How's the arm, Mr. Flitt? Oh, it's uh, healing up fine. One of the bullets just grazed me. You know, I bled quite a lot. Say, wasn't that awful, them trying to kill that boy? And he really wasn't psycho whatchamacallit at all. Uh, Bolton cooked that up to support the suicide story. Oh. What's going to happen to them, Mr. Holliday? Well, they've got Bolton for embezzlement and attempted murder. They're holding Rita as his accomplice. And she was such a beautiful girl and so sweet, too. Yes, George, you can say that again. How, how, how's the rod hot these days, Mr. Flitt? Hot rod, Susie. 
hot rod. Rod hot, red hot. Oh, how is it anyway? Red hot. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, it's fine. And Mr. Holiday, mm? even if I did run away from that gun, I really do have the heart of a lion. But of course, George. Only thing is, <laughs> it's a scaredy cat lion. <laughs> Next week, same time, Alan Ladd stars as Dan Holliday in Box 13. Alan Ladd appears through the courtesy of Paramount Pictures and may currently be seen in Wild Harvest. Box 13 is directed by Ted Hediger. Original music is composed and conducted by Rudy Schrager, with an original story by Larry Kraft. The part of Susie is played by Sylvia Picker. This is a Mayfair production.